Good afternoon. I picked up this book yesterday at a local used bookstore. I think it was only like 75 cents. The title was very intriguing to me, Bikini Planet. Reminded me of uh, what Austin Powers and Outer Space might be like. And it had a forward by Neil Gaiman, so that won me over. 50 cents too, can't beat it. Or 75, I can't remember. So here's the uh, rundown of the story. In the swinging 60s, Las Vegas rookie cop Wayne Norton was a straight arrow, though not exactly the sharpest one in the quiver. When his girlfriend's mafioso father threw him into an experimental cryogenic, cryogenic sleep chamber and forgot to leave a wake-up call, Wayne is revived 300 years later, in a world where nothing is as it seems. Everyone treats him like an incompetent dolt, and he's very confused. All in all, not much has changed. Now, drafted into the elite organization Galacticot, Norton is sent into the middle of a ruthless war for dominion over the galaxy's most prized vacation hotspot and its babe-filled beaches. His weapons are a complete mystery to him. His training is terribly minimal. And his mission? Well, he hasn't quite figured that out yet. I've only read the first chapter, and it uh, it's obvi obviously takes place in the present of this story, and it kind of reads like a uh, detective noir novel. I'll read a little bit of it. June 26, 1968. It was a Wednesday in Las Vegas. All over the world it was Wednesday, except across, uh, except across Australia and half of Asia where it was already Thursday. Wayne Norton sat behind the wheel of a car parked outside a donut shop at the southern end of Las Vegas Boulevard. He had the window wound down because it was only fractionally cooler on the sidewalk than in the vehicle. Only a few years ago, this part of the strip had been all desert. Now there were buildings everywhere, and at least half of them seemed to be hotels or casinos or both. Norton looked in the rearview mirror again, after pulling, it, after pulling in, he'd angled the mirror so he could see himself. This only confirmed what he had already suspected. His new sunglasses weren't right. He didn't look cool enough. When he straightened the mirror, he saw that the stretch limo was still there, still in a no-waiting zone. Norton's car was in the same prohibited zone. But that was different. His was a police car, and he was a police officer. He glanced toward the donut store, but there was no sign of King. They were meant to be on patrol, so one of them had to stay inside the automobile in case of a radio message. Because he was hot and bored and tired, Norton allowed his eyes to close for a second. He quickly opened them again. It would have been so easy to fall asleep, giving King another excuse to complain about babysitting. He had to do something, so he opened the door, climbed out, and walked back along the street toward the Lincoln. It was all black, even the windows. He bent down to peer inside, but could see nothing through the darkened glass. The polished paintwork gleamed in the sunlight, and it looked as if it had come straight out of the showroom. It had Illinois plates, but even a driver from out of state should have recognized a no-waiting sign. Norton wrote a parking ticket and tucked it behind the windshield wiper. That was when the door opened and the driver stepped out. He was six and a half feet tall and must have weighed over 250 pounds. His expensive suit was so well cut, Norton could hardly detect the bulge of his, of his shoulder holster. The driver stood looking at him, then reached for the ticket. He tore it in half, in quarters, in eighths, and he kept tearing it until his massive fingers had crushed the paper to confetti. One squeeze of his huge fist, and he could have probably have turned it to dust. There is, Norton said slowly, a city ordinance against littering. The driver raised his hand to his face and stuffed every scrap of paper into his mouth. He chewed for a few seconds, swallowed it all down. His eyes never left Norton's face. 
He didn't even seem to blink. Then he climbed back into the car, closed the door, and disappeared into the blackness. It was as if none of it had happened. Norton decided it might not be such a good idea to issue the, another ticket. He turned away, and then only realized his right hand was on the butt of his revolver. Sergeant King was leaning against the patrol car eating a donut. Did you see that? I didn't see nothing, King said. That guy just destroyed state property. Where's the evidence? He swallowed it. Here, King handed over a donut. But a parking ticket would probably taste better. So you did see what happened. At least he didn't make you swallow it. What do we do? Nothing. King slid into the passenger seat. A limo like that? Who do you think owns it? We all get on fine, Duke. We leave them alone, they leave us alone. Norton looked at the Lincoln, imagining the invisible driver watching from behind the black windows. The automobile wasn't really his style. But he'd have liked windows like that. They were real cool. And gangsters were always cool. Eating a donut on the street wasn't very cool, but it couldn't be helped. Norton didn't want any crumbs in the car. He wiped his mouth, took a final glance at the, at the Lincoln, hitched up his gun belt, then took back then got back inside the LVPD vehicle. They weren't called gangsters, of course. In Las Vegas, they were known as businessmen, or investors, or property developers. This was their town. They built it. They owned most of it. And that included the police. Not that there was any corruption. Or not much. Gambling, prostitution, all-night drinking, everything was legal. There was no reason to pay off the police, or not much.